What's up guys, Blobinar Essential here. It's me, Rowan. Welcome to a video. Have you ever wanted to learn how to solve a square one? Do you use the Roo method on 3x3? Well then this video is perfect for you because in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to solve a square one using Roo method. If you already know how to solve a square one and you just want to learn how to do it the different way using the Roo method, then skip to this time please and go to that time so that you can learn how to do that. But if you don't know how to solve a square one and you want to solve it with the Roo method, then keep watching and I will explain to you how to do this. So here are the steps of the Roo method on square one, also known as the screw method. This is what a scrambled square one looks like, so it's just all a crazy messed up shape. And from that scrambled state, you're going to want to get it back into the shape of a cube. After that, you just solve your first block and then your second block. Then you solve your corners as if it were CMLL. And then you solve your LR edges, and then you're just left with the M slice. By the way, you always want to hold your square one with the little block on the left and the big block on the right, because that's the only way that it will turn. So the first thing you'll need to know about square one is that it can be frustrating to learn because oftentimes it doesn't turn, but there's a simple way to figure out when you can turn it and when you can't turn it. And in order to be able to turn, you need a, you need a line all the way around the cube that goes through these slices. So here it looks like we'll be able to turn, but we can't because if we follow this line, you'll see that this corner prevents us from being able to turn. So you always have to make sure that you're able to turn if you want to turn the cube. So for example, it looks like I can turn here, but I can't because of this corner. So to prevent that, there. So now we can turn back here, follow the line, and we can turn the entire cube. All right, so now I need to explain to you how to understand and read square one algorithms. So the forward slash indicates that you're just moving the slash or the slice or whatever it's called. So just like doing that is the slash. And in between the slash, there's usually brackets with two numbers separated by a comma. The first number tells you how much to turn the top and the second number tells you how much to turn the bottom. The edges are worth one point and the corners are worth two points and you always count from from the line of the slash. Let's say it's negative five. What do you do? Well, now we're going anti-clockwise. So the corners are worth two, so negative two. Edges are worth one, negative three. Corners are worth two, negative five. So if you have zero comma negative five, for example, you have to remember that on the bottom, clockwise is different from the top. Zero comma negative five would mean this is now anti-clockwise, so negative five from here is one, two, three, four, and this is five. So that's how to read square one algorithms, and now you can do pretty much any square one algorithm. So in order to turn this into an actual cube, we need to get all of the edges to the top. So the way to do this is to look for pairs. So we see pairs of two here, and we got a pair of four here. So there's two ways of inserting things. One way is to insert from the back. So this is inserting from the back because it's on the back of the bottom and it goes to the front here. So that pairs all those up. And now, for example, just for this scramble, I could move all these over here and then mess with these. And then I can insert these from the front, which means putting these in the front. And when you do a slice, when you do a slice, they will always go to the back. So now we have all eight edges on top and the rest of the corners and these two corners here. So that's what you're trying to get to. So play around with your cube and you'll find different ways of getting into strange um, places like cube shape and other weird things. Okay, I feel like this is a harder scramble to explain things, so let's do this. So I see these group of four. I'm gonna try and put them over there to preserve them. And then I'm going to try to attach more edges to it. So there's one. Let's see if I can insert from the back here but I can't because this corner's in the way. However, I can knock that corner out. This step is supposed to be really intuitive and oftentimes you kind of just have to play around with it until you get it. One really annoying case to solve that is really unintuitive is if you have six of them in the top, but these two in the bottom. This case is really frustrating because there's no like intuitive way to do this. However, there's an easy like mental cheat sheet you can use to fix this case. You want to position the L so it looks like this and it's lined up with the slice. Then all you have to do is move two of the edges to the back, do a slice, and then insert these from the back. 
So move these to the back here. And then move the top so that this block, one of them is out in the slice. Then you just slice. And now that L has turned into a line, which is super easy and straightforward. You just slice over and there you have your eight. So that step requires a lot of figuring it out. There's no like easy way to do it. You just gotta try and learn all the shapes. Well, not you don't have to learn all the shapes, but just find patterns, learn what things do, you know, until you get to here. Once you're here, star on bottom and whatever this shape is on top, all eight edges, <laughs> you want to hold it so that it's like almost straight back, but like it's slightly off to the right, see? It's slightly off to the right. And there's this really simple, it's technically an algorithm, but you can think of it in your brain really more easily. So once it's in this position, you simply slice, and you wanna split these two edges in two by this slice. So now two are on the left, two are on the right. Same thing on the bottom. Two on the left, two on the right. And then we do another slice. And now we have like two similar shapes on the top and bottom. So the shape on top, we're going to move it vertically and the shape on bottom we're going to move it across then you slice and now you have this shape i think it's called the kite i'm not sure though you want to have the fatter end in the back on both sides and then all you gotta do is slice and now you finally have it back in a cube good job so now you can start doing what you'd kind of normally do on a regular Rubik's Cube by doing the first block of the Roux method. First block and Roux method, kind of the same exact thing. On most square ones nowadays, white is always going to be your bottom color. So you know that you're looking for the white and green pieces for your first block and the white and blue pieces for your second block. One important thing you need to know before you do any moves when it's in a cube, if you have these lined up and you do a slash, it unsolves cube shape. So the way to stop this from happening is to do, is to misalign any of the edges by just a little bit. And that preserves cube shape. It also flips this, but we'll worry about that later. You can also misalign uh, the D layer edge like that, and that saves cube shape. But if you have both of them misaligned, then it ruins it again. So just make sure to always have one slightly misaligned. So now for first block, we can see that in this particular case, I have two and the other corners over there. So the way to do this would be to move it to the front, but we have to misalign it. But the question is, which one do we misalign? If we misalign the top and bring this down, then the edge doesn't stay. So basically, you have, want to put the edge over so that the edge doesn't move. Then you can see we have both of these misaligned, which is bad, you only want one misaligned. So we unmisalign the top and bring this corner down. And that would solve first block. Here's another example. So I'm doing white and green first block because that's the one that we have to do. Corner, edge, other corner. The way that I would see to do this would be to move this corner over so that it's misaligned a little bit because that would break, that would not break cube shape. Do a slash, bring the edge back, undo the slash and that pairs them up. Now we just have this corner, which is in a terrible position, but we can still work with it. So I'm gonna bring this corner to the top by misaligning the top. And now I need to find some way of inserting this, which is not that hard as it seems. You just do basically a D move and you wanna bring this corner down there. And now that's a first block. Let me put that over there, first block. Now it's time for second block. So second block is the white and blue pieces. And this is essentially just the same thing as the first block, except you can't really use the D layer as much anymore. You can still turn it like this. So basically what I see here is that I can misalign it like this and simply pair these up by hiding this, bringing the edge over and unhiding it. And now they're paired up. Now you wanna pair up the other blue corner to do to complete your block building. So it's right here. So we can hide this, move that over, and unhide it, but oh no, we just broke it. So we have to uh, unmisalign and then misalign the bottom a little bit because then this edge will not break. So then we can do the slash move and now we have these two and this one and we're trying to get them as close as possible to be aligned. So 
I'm going to move this to the back. I'm going to misalign the bottom so that I can temporarily hide this corner, bring these over, and then unhide it. And now we built that. And now there is a fancy thing you can do here. If it is a perfect cube, once you've built this like on top, then you can misalign, flip it, so that when you insert these like blocks, it still becomes a cube. Because if you don't do that, then when you try and insert this, uh, the belt will flip here. And that's fine, it's just kind of strange. So make sure before you insert this that you flip the belt thing and then insert your block. Now we need to do CMLL like you would with Rue. Now there's two algorithms here and I will put them both on screen. Um, because we can't like twist the corners in this place, there's only two algorithms, the adjacent swap and the opposite swap. For adjacent swap, you want to hold the headlights in the back and perform this algorithm. And that should hopefully solve your corners. Now me personally, I don't know the diagonal swap, so I just do the adjacent swap twice. But if you want to get really good with square one rue, then you should learn all the algorithms. I think there's only like 10 in total, so it's pretty easy to do. Now we just have our last uh, last six edges. So basically the way to do this is we solve LR and then we do the M slice. So at this point, you're gonna want to know this uh, really important move. So this like kind of mini algorithm will simulate doing an M2 on a three by three. And that's basically you misalign the top, slice, Unmisalign the top, misalign the bottom, and then slice, and then align the bottom. And that basically just simulates doing an M2 on a 3x3. For example, my LR edges are yellow and green, and yellow and blue. So here's the yellow blue, and I want to get it to the bottom. So I can simply simulate doing an M2. And now it's in the bottom. But the question becomes, how do we put this also in the bottom? Well, you're gonna use this algorithm, which simulates doing a three cycle from LSE. So it simulates doing the three cycle where this edge goes to there. So this is yellow and red. Doing the algorithm puts it there. So this algorithm puts this piece there basically and also does a three cycle, but we'll worry about that later. So the algorithm goes like this. So that should have swapped these two pieces, and now, if you have both of your LR edges in the bottom, you simply put the opposite colored corners here, and you simulate doing an M2, and that should solve your LR. Okay, here is where a thing called parity happens. It's when you have cases that are impossible on a 3x3. For example, you'd think this is just a U2M2, U2M2 case, but here they're also swapped like that. So this would be impossible during normal LSE on a 3x3. So if you get any of these cases that wouldn't happen normally on a 3x3, then you perform this algorithm. And this is a horrible, very long algorithm, but all square oneers know that they, you just gotta learn it. And that should solve parity. If I want to put this piece in here, I just do a U2 and then a three cycle. And now that's in there. And now I just have a U2, M2, U2 case. So I do the U2, then I do the M2, and the U2. And then finally, just an M2. So that solves the square one. I hope you have solved your square one. And if that was your first ever time solving a square one using Rue or just ever solving a square one, make sure to leave a comment and a like. Okay, all you monkey muffins who have skipped ahead, 
You guys are professionals. You have solved a square one before, and you don't need the baby tutorial on how to do it. You probably solve using the Vandenberg method or the Lin method or something like that, but I will teach you how to do Rue method. Step one is doing cube shape. So you just get it back into a cube, like with most um, methods. And once you have got it back into a cube, instead of doing whatever you normally do, uh, you're gonna wanna build a block here. So how you're gonna need to do that is you're going to attach the corners to the edges and just make like a root block here. I see this edge and these corners. So basically what I can do is I can put that in the back. I'll misalign the top so that this edge goes down there. So here's this corner, it needs to come down here, but we're gonna destroy that edge and cube shape. So misalign that. And now you have a first block on square one. Now you keep doing that until you get second block. So like block building on square one, very awesome. For example here, I want this corner to go there, but I can't yet. So I have to do it in two steps, kind of like this to pair these up. And now you want to um, flip the belt before inserting. That just makes it like kind of easier. And now you have both your blocks done and you just need to do your corners. If you have algorithms that solve your corners, use them. If not, here's an algorithm that does an adjacent swap in the front, so... Kinda like that. Once you've solved your corners, you want to get your LR edges in the bottom. So you're gonna wanna learn this crucial thing for using square one and root. It's basically, it simulates doing an M2. So it will bring this to there, and you basically misalign the top, slice, change both of the misalignments, and then unslice. As you can see, that brought that there. So what you want to do is bring both of your LR edges to the bottom. So I'm going to do an M2. And then I need to bring this to there somehow. And for that, you're going to use a three cycle alg, like an LSE for Rue. So the algorithm for that is goes like this. And it's right there, hopefully, yep. And if you do that correctly, you have both your LR edges in the bottom, and you just align them to opposite corners and do an M2. But here's where you can have parity, and if you already know a parity algorithm, the one that swaps like these two, uh, sorry, you can't really use that with square one rule, you're gonna have to learn this parity algorithm. But anyway, as you can see, I have two swapped edges, which is impossible for normal LSE and Rue. So we're gonna perform this parity algorithm. And if you have done that successfully, now you will actually have a possible case. So here is just a normal three cycle, so you can use the algorithm from earlier. And now your square one is solved. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this um, helped you solve your first square one or just taught you how to solve Rue on square one. If you want to see more tutorials like, um, like how to do Rue on 4x4, for example, then let me know in the description. Please like the video, share it with um, all your Cuba friends, and I'll see you in the next one.